Imperial officer uniforms came in a variety of colors, which all related to the wearer's branch within the Empire. The most common colors were the olive green and gray colored uniforms, which belonged to officers in the Imperial Army and Navy. The less common white uniforms were given to ISB and Imperial Intelligence agents, and the rare black uniforms to Stormtrooper officers. However, the rarest Imperial officer uniform by far was the red one, worn only by two people during the Galactic Empire's reign. Unlike the other uniform colors mentioned earlier, the red uniform was worn as part of a powerful Imperial family rather than in relation to a specific position in the Empire. However, both members of said family were directors of the Imperial Intelligence while they wore the red uniforms, so it can be associated to that position as well. Before we continue, we want to talk about today's sponsorship. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN allows you to surf the web from any location in the world by allowing you to change your IP address and keep your location secure. Those of you living outside of the United States especially may want to get NordVPN, as it is common for Star Wars shows to be available a couple months late on popular streaming services like Netflix in countries outside of the United States. You especially don't want to be stuck watching The Mandalorian or the newest season of The Clone Wars a few months late once Disney Plus arrives and miss all the initial hype that will surround these shows. And by using NordVPN, you'll be able to access these shows right when they arrive to the States by changing your internet location address. NordVPN is only $3.49 a month with a 3-year plan, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But, we have a special offer to all of you currently watching, as you can get 70% off plus one additional month free by clicking the link in the description below, or by visiting nordvpn.com slash theloremaster. Keep your internet safe, while also helping to support the channel. The red uniform was initially worn by Armand Isard, who served as the first head director of the Imperial Intelligence upon its creation, following the declaration of the Galactic Empire. Having been a close ally of Palpatine for years prior to him becoming Emperor, Armand quickly rose to become one of the most powerful men in the Empire, among the likes of Wilhuff Tarkin and Saint Pestage. Working alongside Darth Vader and the Inquisitors on a frequent basis when it came to hunting down surviving Jedi, Armand was almost the bridge between the dark side adepts of the Empire and the traditional branches of the military, transferring and maintaining vital intel between the two groups. While it is not exactly known why Armand Isard decided to wear a red uniform, it wasn't uncommon for high-ranking Imperials to greatly alter their standard-issued uniforms. Seeing how he worked so closely among the Sith of the Empire through their Inquisitors and other Dark Side servants, it's possible the red color of his uniform reflected the traditional color of the Sith. When it came to serving as Director of the Imperial Intelligence, Armand's duties involved spying on enemies of the Empire, as well as signing off on assassinations, exposing and hunting down traitors, fighting corruption, and maintaining vital intel among the various Imperial military branches. Despite being given the duty of fighting corruption within the Empire, Armand understood the importance of having historically powerful and wealthy families and houses in support of the Imperial government, often giving members of said families minor punishments over corruption in hopes of maintaining the order their power helped cement. Armand also involved himself in numerous noble house conflicts, typically siding with the house and family that was the most pro-imperial, and then using his power to ensure they were the ones who came out on top. One of the most notable examples of this were his efforts in influencing the position of the House of Dooku on Sereno by ordering the assassination of the current head of the family, who was the nephew of the former Jedi Master Count Dooku, and later ensuring that House Malvern took the title of Count of Sereno, effectively making them the leaders and most powerful family within the Sereno system. Fully understanding the importance of political power and influential family held within the Galactic Empire, Armand did everything to ensure his own blood, the Isard family, would remain on top for decades to come. This involved him bringing up his own daughter, Izayn Asard, as an agent within the Imperial Intelligence, and grooming her to take the mantle as head of the family when the time came. But he ended up grooming her a bit too well, as Armand began to fear for his own position within the Empire, following the Rebel Alliance's capture of the Death Star plans, as protecting them was one of his duties. This failure in protecting the Death Star plans made Armand vulnerable in being replaced as Director of Imperial Intelligence, and he feared his own daughter was making the moves to replace him. Because of this, Armand ended up sending her on a mission he knew she would fail in, in order to make her look incompetent. But while she was on the mission, 
Izayn figured out the true purpose of it and her father's attempt to ruin her career. So she instead flipped the script on him and went to betray him by manipulating Imperial intel behind his back and making it look like it was he who gave the rebels the Death Star plans and that Armand was attempting to use the Rebel Alliance to overthrow Palpatine and take the throne for himself. Izayn was able to get this manipulated information directly to Palpatine, who later called in Armand and had him arrested and slated for execution. Izayn herself was rumored to have been the one to execute her father, promising him before his death that he shouldn't worry because their family legacy was in good hands. The director of intelligence position was then given to Lord Cronel, a dark side agent of Palpatine, but his stay there didn't last too long, and the position was later taken by Izayn, filling in the shoes of her father and wearing the red uniform like him before. As director, Izayn transformed the organization into one that would more effectively combat the recently formed Rebel Alliance, putting resources into capturing and torturing Rebel prisoners in order to turn them into unwilling sleeper agents. She also attempted to manipulate Palpatine a bit by making him question and suspect his other close allies, all in hopes of placing herself closer to his sphere of power. But Palpatine always knew not to take the bait, even calling her out once that out of everyone she mentioned, he trusted her the least. It's even possible that Palpatine knew all along of her manipulations over her father, and that the only reason he allowed her to succeed him was due to her ambition, and that the true punishment of Armand was in his failure in protecting the Death Star plans and attempting to cover up his failures on blaming his daughter. Nonetheless, Izayn's real rise to power came following the death of Emperor Palpatine during the Battle of Endor. Although the Galactic Empire fractured into multiple territories held by warring warlords, Izayn remained at the center of the power vacuum at Coruscant, which at the time still held the greatest power over the remaining Imperial resources. Acting as an advisor to the newly recognized leader of the Empire, Saint Pestage, Izayn quickly realized how incompetent the man was as a ruler, and manipulated him in allowing herself to eliminate her own rivals. Once that was done, she had the Imperial ruling council on Coruscant turn on Saint Pestage, forcing him to flee from the capital. She then turned on the ruling council itself, assassinating its members until the organization itself had lost its power on the capital. Following her purges on her political enemies, she quickly became a dictator of the remaining imperial territory that still recognized the imperial capital's authority, having some refer to her as the Queen of the Empire, and effectively making her likely the second most powerful imperial warlord at the time second only to Warlord Zinj, who held the most territory and resources. But her hold onto power didn't last long, as only a year after her rise to power, the New Republic invaded Coruscant in an attempt to liberate it from the Empire. Fully understanding she was going to lose the battle, Izayn took a hidden Executor-class Star Dreadnought buried within the planet's deep levels and blasted out of there as a means to flee from the New Republic, killing millions in the process and likely making it the largest single incident on the planet to cause the most deaths. Her escape with the Executor-class Star Dreadnought, known as the Lusanka, only bought her a short amount of time, as only months following her departure from Coruscant, she was tracked down by a rogue squadron of the New Republic, and ended up losing the Star Dreadnought to the Republic Special Forces, which were able to capture the warship for the New Republic, making it the most powerful ship within the NR fleet. Despite this, Izayn was able to avoid capture and escaped into Imperial-friendly territory. However, after losing both the Imperial capital and an Executor-class Dreadnought, many under her leadership began to question her ability to lead, and even started to abandon her. As more time passed, Izayn simply fell into irrelevancy, and even accepted that fate. As by the time Grand Admiral Thrawn had returned to combat the New Republic, she decided to stay out of the conflict and just watch it unfold from the sidelines fully believing at this point that the Empire was dead and could not be revived. By the fifth year following the Battle of Endor, Izayn was killed by Wedge Antilles' wife, Elia Wesiri Antilles, when the woman attempted to capture Izayn, but was forced to kill her after the former director resisted. And with Izayn's death, the Izard name died with her, as she had no children and all relatives of her family had died decades earlier.